Hey hey, this is Tiger. Welcome to my stream. Hey hey, this is Tiger. Welcome to my stream. Hey hey, this is Tiger. Welcome to my stream. Hey hey, this is Tiger. Welcome to my. And welcome to the echo on my stream. I hope I stop this now. Yeah, you might have noticed we are already in the game. This is a bit awkward today because uh, the loading procedure uh, decreased significantly. Um, after the game now recognizes uh, the DLC Ruhe uh, what it did not do before and so the loading procedure actually reduced or got reduced from about one minute to 20 seconds and so it was already done after um, I clicked on the button that starts the stream. So we are already here, but you all know the opening sequence of Trains in World 3 and you can just imagine that you saw that to get into the stream here. What I was planning to do today is uh, look into more specifics of the PZB system, the punktuelle Zugbeeinflussung, especially in connection with red signals and with um, yeah, with situations where you are actually allowed to pass red signals or something alike. Hey AJ, how are you doing on this Sunday afternoon? I actually thought we just jump in to the fray and have a look at one minuscule service that takes us in the Dresden DLC from the depot in Dresden Altstadt to Dresden Hauptbahnhof just to see what I am talking about yes thank you I'm I'm well. I did not fall off any horse and uh I'm I'm really doing well. Thank you. So the first service, a minuscule service that I wanted to play is one where you start a train that is still sitting in the depot and um, you have to navigate your way out of the depot into the station. And uh, I wanted to talk about those little shunting signals that you can find on the ground and why you usually can ignore them. And this leads the way then to situations where you can pass red signals when you got a specific order from your dispatcher or when you see white dots on the signal. The funny thing is with this train, if you start a service anew, you cannot release the brakes. It always takes a couple of seconds until you can release the brakes. Well, we're supposed to drive this train into the main station. As always, we start with the PZB start program. And now we cannot go out of our siding, siding where the train was stabled, because there is this little bugger sitting there. Right. Let's use this camera to have a straight look at it. It is, as small as it is, a full-blown HPO red light that you are not supposed to uh, pass. Otherwise, you will get. If there is a magnet here, there is no magnet, but there can be a 2,000 hertz magnet. You can get a Zwangsbremsung, and in the game, you totally spat out. You can see that this little signal has a specific mass shield, um, a post sign, with those white uh, background and two black dots on it that designate this signal as a signal of a specific kind. You will all, all only en encounter signals of that kind in Eastern Germany because it is from the regime of the signal book that was valid for the Deutsche Reichsbahn, Reichsbahn in the former German Democratic Republic. But this does not actually change a lot. 
those thingies work more or less as you would have uh, thought and it as long as it is red you must not pass it as soon as it switches to two white lights then you can pass it the red light will go off and then those two white lights in connection with this post sign will tell you you can just pass the signal and you don't need to press any key on your PCB computer <laughs> yeah it is going to switch it is going to switch sometime but I hope it won't take much longer yes now you saw it switching it switched we can go back in our train and we can go and those signals as soon as they switched to this aspect you can just pass them without anything we will encounter signals like the that you cannot pass unless you do something specific on your PCB stuff but I wanted to start with the easiest this is just a stop and go signal now we are encountering an HL signal that tells us 40 now and slow later that is the flashing yellow over the steady uh, yellow this is why we got a thousand hertz influencing monitoring after we press the Wachsamkeitstaste this is a repeater actually as you can see what is funny because it is a KS repeater after an LHL signal this funny sign on the signal that looks like a T turned 90 degrees to the side is a signal that tells you that you are running into like a cul-de-sac you know that the Dresden Hauptbahnhof is more or less a cul-de-sac you just can drive in there is a dead end and you have to drive out the other way or the way that you just entered apart from that we got another thousand hertz monitoring and we will most probably until we get there get a 500 hertz monitoring and you can see the red light lighting up all that you already know because we covered it a couple of times in the streams before in PCBO, PCBM, PCBU even in the GPA magnet stream well no we're not getting a 500 hertz here because there is no signal at the end of this platform we just have to stop here yeah that was the first little still have to open the doors anyway this was the first little service showing you what those shunting signals might be about and I mentioned the GPA magnets I have a little update for those GPA magnets in our PZB Punktuelle Zugbeeinflussungs universe we have talked about this last time we have looked at the situation where you get a signal or a speed sign telling you that you have to reduce your speed below line speed to a speed of 100 or above and we have learned in the PZB streams and videos that in those situations where the speed limit that is incoming is 100 or above you don't need to acknowledge that but there are certain installations in the tracks called GPAs 
that actually check on the approach to the incoming speed limit if the driver is reducing the speed accordingly and we had looked at this table here and that was telling us in relation to the upcoming speed limit what speed is controlled at what distance and then you have this setup with the 2000 Hertz magnets and the two switching magnets and uh, the system works just to recapitulate that in a way that when the train hits the switch on magnet then there is a timer initiated and the timer runs down to zero and if the train hits the 2000 Hertz magnets before the timer has elapsed then the 2000 Hz magnet is active and stops the train and obviously the length of this time uh, <coughs> is calculated according to the speed that the train is allowed to have at this point so if the train is faster then the, the time will not have elapsed until the train hits the 2000 Hz magnets magnet and gets stopped if the train is slower then the time will have elapsed and then the 2000 Hz is no longer active and if you watched the stream of last week then you saw me wondering why at a situation where we are approaching a 100 speed limit reduction um, we got stopped when we traveled with 109 uh, although the directive said that we should be controlled to 120 and now I know why this might probably be the case because there is a footnote in the directive thanks to open-minded for pointing this out to me saying that there might be um, on certain tracks where there is a general track limit of 120 in eastern Germany in front of main signals there might be um, a speed monitoring to 105 kilometers per hour not 120 and probably this is one of the situations where we ran into on our last stream so if Lucas like the one guy on the chat last time uh, maintained uh, says on the discord from uh, Dovetail Games that he just implemented stuff as it is specified in the track plans that he has then probably this is the reason for it that is a specific uh, a, speci uh, a specific situation that you can only encounter in eastern germany on tracks with uh, a track limit of 120 kilometers the old tracks in eastern germany all have, have this speed limit of 120 because they did not build any trains that were going faster and then you can encounter this. So this was an update for last week and uh, so most probably at this point everything is as it is supposed to be. It is not what the directive tells us as the general case but in this exceptional case for Eastern Germany it actually might be just as it is supposed to be. What I wanted to look at today are the shunting signals and the Befehl 40 uh, function in the PZB and um, what you have to do if you want to pass a red signal. This is a red signal, a HPO signal. I put a mast plaque on the mast that tells us that this is a main signal. Obviously only main signals can display a red aspect, a stop aspect. And we know already that red signals, red signals, main signals are often secured with the 2000 Hz magnets. As soon as the train runs the red signal, the 2000 Hz magnet is active and stops the train. So the train will at least stop some distance after the signal. And then there are sometimes situations where you as a dispatcher want to allow the train to pass the red signal with caution. We have seen this a couple of times when we were doing the American signaling systems. There are stop and proceed signals. Red signals with a number plate or with some other things that uh, made the signal a stop and proceed signal where you were allowed to 
drive past the red signal but have to be extremely cautious afterwards usually have to drive on site or even on half site like in Canada and uh, we have seen in the stream about the British signaling system that they actually have a signal that has an aspect that looks totally the same we have a red light and we put two white auxiliary lights under it or next to it I hope you can see that on the stream uh, on the stream it is a bit small I guess but still we have the red signal and as soon as we have those diagonally uh, aligned two white lights we are allowed to pass that signal but we have to be cautious we have to drive on site and this is usually done for uh, shunting services and in Germany it is uh, specified specifically that this only allows shunting services to pass especially if you want to couple to uh, a train that is already in this part of the track so what we have here is a HP0 signal and those two dots are called SH1 in uh, our signal book and this tells us shunting services may pass but if you just drive along and pass the signal then you are in for a nasty surprise because the 2000 Hz magnet is still active it still safeguards that no one just rushes the signal but goes slow um, but before we uh, talk about what you have to do to not be stopped by the 2000 Hz magnets I just wanted to look at the alternate firm form of that signal that we have in Eastern Germany in the HL uh, signaling system it looks like this it is the same red light with two white auxiliaries but they are not underneath or not on the side but they are uh, around the red signal so this is what an HL signal of that kind looks and it has a different name it is an HL C uh, O with an RA12 that is it called in this context the indication is totally the same shunting services might pass and what do you have to do now this is uh, the this is uh, what calls for the third key that you have in your set of uh, PZB keys you'll know if you look in your train we can actually do that to make it a bit more graspable here those are the three keys that you have in your train for PZB you have the acknowledge key the Wachsamkeitstaste that you always press when you are passing a yellow signal or a signal that uh, uh, gives you a warning about an incoming speed reduction this is what you use for your bread and butter with PZB. This is the PZB release key. If you release from a monitoring or from the starting program and this is the Befehlstaste. This is the key that you have to press if you want to run over a 2000 Hz magnet without getting stopped and you have to press it and hold it all the way until you are uh, across the, uh, the 2000 Hz magnet and then you can release it again and you just heard it the train will always make some noise when you're doing this so you just press and hold the Befehlstaste as long as the train passed the 2000 Hz and as long as you're doing this the train will not react to the 2000 Hz magnet you can do that even with uh, red signal without the white dots but you are only allowed to do this if you have a written order from the dispatcher it is not just enough that he radios you yeah it's okay that you run the red signal he has to send you a written order for that to be okay and the train event recorder will actually uh, uh, record this if you uh, hold down the Befehls test and run the 2000 Hz magnet and then it can be checked afterwards if there was a written order to do that with those two white dots you don't need a written order this is order enough the two white dots but you still have to press the Befehls test and then on your uh, display on your PZB display depending on what kind of uh, 
a device you have on your train, either the indicator with Befehl 40, a white indicator with this uh, text, will light up or it will be visible on your display. As long as you hold down the Befehls key after running the 2000 Hz. So it lights up when you hit the 2000 Hz magnet, so you know, okay, I hit the 2000 Hz, and then you can let go of the Befehls taste and then this light goes off. And as long as the light is on, you are controlled to 40. And uh, if you have an MFD, like in this train here, then you also get this message. Überwachung 45 kmh. Okay, let's have a look at a situation of that kind in the game. For that we no need to go in a different DLC, the Tarante Rampe DLC. I wanted the Taranta Rampe DLC caption here. That is better. And the service that I wanted to pick for the Taranta Rampe was one of. Yeah, it was that one. I think now we are good. No? It's not good. Doch. That is what I wanted to do. I've actually been looking for um, m more situations where you have to run a red signal with those white dots on. But I was not able to find the one situation that I had in my mind. So we have to make due with the one in the Tarantarampe. And uh, again, it's the Talent 2 that we have to use here. And now we're doing the trip the other way around. We are starting in Dresden Hauptbahnhof and we are going with our train to the depot. Stabling it there. And uh, when entering the depot, we can see that there is this uh, signal that we have been talking about, the red signal with the two white lights on. On the stream about the electrostars in the British system on the Brighton main line, we also had a situation with the red light and the two white lights according with it, but in the British system you don't need to have to hit a Befehls key, you can just pass the signal after the white lights turned on. So again, I have to wait a bit because the train does not release the brakes when you just jump into the service. Always takes some time for the brakes to react. Now they do. Well, the point is um, that you get warned, obviously. There can still be an overspeed control in front of the red light, so that you don't approach the signal with a speed that is much too high. If you switch the signal to green, for example, then you do not have this overspeed control, then you can just rush the signal with 100 miles and nothing happens. If the signal is still red, then the overspeed approach control can be active, slowing you down or slowing your approach to yeah, maybe 20 or 30 miles at whatever point you actually control the speed. And uh, you can do it in a way that you require the train driver to stop in front of the red signal and then switch on the white lights. So that he has to enter the block from a standstill and obviously 
is much slower than And uh, here with the PZB, the big thing is actually that the train event recorder can uh, can record uh, record the the pressing of the Befehlstaste, and then can check if there was a reason for doing this. Now you see we get a non-flashing yellow signal that announces the red signal ahead so even if there are white dots at the red signal it is announced just like any other red signal is usually announced with a yellow one in front of it and you can see we also got uh, we already got our 1000 hertz monitoring we will get a 500 hertz monitoring and here you can see our red HL0 with the two white auxiliary lights that allow us to pass it and here it is my opinion that you have to press the Befehlstaste then you can pass it then you can release it and you did not get stopped by the red light and you did not spat out at this point. I have to admit that in this specific service, in this specific situation, the 2000 Hz magnet does not seem to be active. So even without pressing the Befehl 40 Taste, you would not have gotten a Zwangsbremsung here. I'm not entirely sure if this is another um, specific case because we are in Eastern Germany here or whether this is uh, this just has been forgotten and this um, magnet has not been armed but I have seen in the game situations where the 2000 Hz magnet actually was active and where you got stopped and spat it out if you did not press the Befehlstaste so that was that situation and yeah y y you you find that on the forum every now and then when people are asking her I, I thought I was uh, I was allowed to pass the signal the game is telling me I am allowed to pass the signal because the white dots are on um, but I pass it and, and then I um, get a Zwangsbremsung or even spat out even though the white dots were on and uh, yeah that is a case where people did not press and hold uh, did not press and held the the Befehlstaste it is not enough to just press it like with the Wachsamkeitstaste but you actually have to hold it down until the train is across the 2000 Hz magnet or the receiver that is mounted underneath your train and then it is safe to let it go again um, yeah the next thing that I wanted to have a look at is this funny thing you might have seen those signs on the track they are usually on the track that you are not uh, driving on with your train it is on the uh, the other track right if, if you for some reason are diverted into the track that would usually be used by the traffic that is coming from the opposite direction then instead of signals you often see signs like this this is a so-called Trapeztafel uh, NE1 sign and a sign like this replaces a red signal so you are not supposed to pass here without the dispatcher's clearance unlike a red signal you don't necessarily need a written order to pass it um, you just need uh, the clearance by the dispatcher that can be sent by radio and uh, obviously this is a signal that does not change in appearance it always looks like this it has this uh, trapeze the trapezoid form on top of it with the 
black uh, edge and the white field and it always has this striped post this uh, black and white striped post and it can be and often is secured with a 2000 hertz magnet just like um, a red signal is and for those trapeze tafeln the thing with the Befehlstaste is just the same as with a red light so if you're actually running into a track where you encounter Trapeztafeln because you are directed into the uh, the other track because there is an obstruction or because there is construction work or whatever going on or on minor tracks you have this a lot then um, you are not allowed to pass it until typically you get the clearance on the radio by the dispatcher and then you cannot just run over it at least not in the game but you have to use your Befehlstaste to tackle the 2000 Hertz magnet. I have read in sources that actually the dispatcher can switch off the 2000 Hertz magnet here so then you would technically not be required to hold down your Befehlstaste uh, to not get stopped but I don't know if that is something that uh, happens as a general rule or not or if there are installations where the 2000 hertz is always active what i can tell you the one situation that i found in the game where we can look at this the 2000 hertz magnet is active even after you received the clearance from the dispatcher so you have to use your befeels tester and uh, another thing that some people that ask for advice on the forums not always know is that a trapeze tafel like this can be announced with a distance signal sign, a four signal tafel, without a distance signal attached to it. Usually we know this sign with the X because it is attached to our distance signals that warn us about what the next signal will tell us. And those uh, signs can mm, stand isolated and then they just mark the beginning of the regular braking distance until we get to a trapeze tafel and what the funny thing is about those can have a, uh, a 1000 hertz magnet and you have to acknowledge them with the Wachsamkeitstaste and get a thousand hertz monitoring just like the yellow uh, four signal the yellow distance signal that usually precedes a uh, red signal a red main signal so careful about that if you are passing uh, a four signal tafel that is isolated then don't forget to acknowledge it and get your to uh, get your 1000 hertz monitoring and this those those things can be overlooked quite easily we will see it later in the game that um if you're just driving happily your way and all of a sudden you get a zwangsbremsung a penalty break then it might be because you uh, forgot to uh, acknowledge uh, isolated distance signal sign and uh, the same thing applies to the 500 hertz it is just like yellow signal red signal but without signals only the four signal tafel and then the befeels tafel and this situation we will see in the next service but before we go into the next service I just wanted to put this here on the presentation what we looked at uh, in the beginning of this video of this stream there was this shunting signal with the red light and this is a red light like a signal with a red light high up above on the ground you mustn't run it it can be secured with a 2000 hertz magnet and in east germany we have those mast signs telling us as soon as it switched to this indication we can just ignore it then we can drive past it we don't have to use our Befehls Taste. We don't need any more order from the dispatcher. Back to the trains and switching the DLC. This is the first time I think that we used the uh, Rhein Ruhr Osten DLC. What is a nice DLC that has some signaling issues in my opinion but that does not change the fact that it is a really nice DLC. 
cell. Let's see if we can put this in an order that it does not look completely out of. Out of order, yeah. Mm. Choose a root. Mm. Rhein Osten. And what was. Ah, yeah. I use uh, a Trax 2 locomotive, the Baureihe 185.5 in the MRCE livery. A, a locomotive in that very uh, version actually comes with the Rhein Ruhr Osten DLC, so I'm using this one. And Wuppertal Steinbock to Hagen, this is, I think, a service that has this specific path where we pass a trapez tafel. And I want to start up the train rather fast because then we might see some nice action with the with the S-Bahn that is on the same track as we are. So I just use the Independent break. To hold the train in place. And we are re releasing the other, the train brakes. We use the RFB, apply some throttle and then release the independent brake. And see if our train gets into motion. Yeah. You can see here are the signals that we have been talking about in the west. Western German version they have usually a Hauptsignal mast signs to go with them and two red lights instead of only one what the indications are as far as it is of interest for us in the game totally the same another thing what I almost forgot there is a little signaling issue in the uh, in this DLC. This is why I got this role-playing element here in uh, always acknowledge signal uh, 84 set R16 and ignore the white light. It got stuck. We will just see what this is supposed to tell us. And this is why I'm not releasing from the starting program and stick to my 40. Because although this signal, this is the signal that the instruction is talking about, although this signal is a steady green, and from what we can see, it has mast signs that tell us that this is a main signal and a distant signal at the same time. So it is a steady KS1. It should not have a white auxiliary light below the signal aspect and it should not have its 1000 Hz magnet active and still when we pass it and activate it we get a 1000 Hz influencing or monitoring so this in my opinion should not happen this light should not be there and the magnet should not be active and this is why I put this additional instruction part into the video. We will be going across a lot of switches. This is why I just stick to the 40. And uh, what you can see here, not only that the s bahn is using the same track here, but what you can al also see is that the AFB version that runs on this version of the Trax 2 is um, almost superhumanly capable of not uh, running the speed that you uh, select. I select 40 for the AFB and you can see the force meter here always jumping down like almost pumping the brake effort to not uh, go over the 40. Later versions don't have that. Here you can see on the signal this well yeah S-like sign that tells us that we are going into the 
part of the track that is usually reserved for, for the traffic that is coming from the other direction. We are going into the Gegengleis. And um, we're not only going into the Gegengleis, but we also got a yellow signal that to told us that we are approaching a signal where we have to stop. So we can actually slow down a bit. We are in piece at BM. What you can see, the 70 marker here is telling us. And now we are actually approaching an isolated four signal, as you can see here. That is for our track. And it needs to be acknowledged and we got a new thousand hertz. It also had this uh, white triangle on top of it telling us that the braking distance to the trapeze tafel is shorter than it would usually be. And it had this arrow indicator that told us that this four signal tafel belongs to our track even if it is set up on the left side. And you might agree that this can be overlooked easily. And now we get our 500 hertz and we are closing in on the trapeze tafel. You can see it coming already over there. So what I could do, I could stop the train, radio to the dispatcher if we are cleared to uh, pass the trapeze tafel. Or what at least the game allows, I don't know if it is a thing that you are allowed to do in real life. You can radio the dispatcher even when the train is rolling and the dispatcher tells us proceed as at restricted speed so we have the clearance now to pass the trapeze tafel. And still we have to press the Befehlstaste. And then you can see actually the indicator with the Befehl 40 lighting up. See? And it is on as long as I press down the key and if I let go it goes back to the 1000 Hz monitoring. Without pressing the Befehlstaste here we would have gotten a Zwangsbremsung. It would not have been a spat out because we got the clearance from the dispatcher but still the PZB system would have stopped us. So this is what we have been talking about. Isolated for signal tafel and then the trapeze tafel where you have to acknowledge first and then use your Befehlstaste even after you got the clearance from the dispatcher. Another thing where I'm really happy about that it is in the game. So if you look on your speed profile here, we are going across a lot of switches, so there is no point in accelerating our train beyond the 40. We can just go on with the 40. Until we are on the track that we are supposed to end up. This yellow signal is not for us, it belongs to the track on our left. But what we get now is an HP2 signal that tells us we have to go 40 from this point. What is not a problem. S-Bahn is overtaking us, the 422 train. This is a main signal as you can see from the mast sign. We don't have to acknowledge it, we just have to stick to the 40. What is good because we are going across the switch with a max speed of 40, so all good. And the next distance signal is green, telling us we could go to line speed, but first obviously the whole train has to pass the switch and then we can actually accelerate a bit. Here you can see a trapeze tafel from the other side. Unfortunately the trucks too 
does not have a Roadrunner, at least not in the game. I've read that it is possible to install a Roadrunner system in the Trax 2, but the Trax 2 locomotives in the game do not have a Roadrunner, unfortunately. So, we can accelerate a bit after the train has cleared the switches. But have to keep in mind that we have to mm, go down again to 40 because we are going across more switches not so far in front of us. Cruise control system is an AFB, that means with the throttle I can set the max power that the AFB cruise control system is using to accelerate the train. So if I think 70% is the maximum that is safe to apply without getting wheel slips, then I can allow those 70 for the AFB. It is nice here with the service because we are overtaking the S-Bahn and then the S-Bahn is overtaking us. I hope we have not been too fast so that the S-Bahn can actually come back again. And now we're getting warned about... No, we are not getting warned about... Now we are getting warned about an incoming stop. A yellow 4 signal. So we have to slow down below the 70. So that the S-Bahn can actually overtake us again. And we have to decelerate below 45 as a piece of BM train in case we get the 500 hertz monitoring. So this was another example that usually there is no big point in accelerating your heavy freight train if you only have a short distance to go faster until you have to slow down again before going across the switch. Let's see what our signals are doing in front of us, if they have cleared or if they are still red. because. We have been warned about an incoming red signal. And they are still red. So there is no point in rushing to the signals. Always better to keep the train running at a slow velocity as compared to stopping it and starting it anew, especially with a heavy freight train. You can see the 500 hertz magnet incoming. This is the 500 hertz. If you can choose, it's always better to not pass the 500 hertz magnet because then you don't get the 500 hertz monitoring and you don't have to pass the signal because from the 500 hertz you cannot release. But now, yeah, we made it just like that. The signal changed just before just before um, we hit the 500 hertz so we don't get the 500 hertz influencing and we can just go ahead still we have uh, HP2 telling us to go 40 across the switches but we can see the 4 signal is green the signal in front of us will be cleared So you can see we are going across two switches. 
we've been talked about this here in the speed line you can always see when there are those peaks that totally looks like you're going across two switches and are going a very short uh, distance on a faster track like this is the switch this is the fa the short distance on the faster track and this is the switch again and now we're going on this part of the track that leads uphill we can try to see if we can see when our train is across the switches most probably now it is let's check, no it's not probably we only see the one switch there are locomotives where you can totally see that much better but here the head out of the window view is quite close to the locomotive so you can't see the end of your train so now we can accelerate and even if the line speed as you can see here is 160 obviously we cannot go 160 with our freight train we are in PZBM that limits us to 120 anyway and even in if, if we were in PZBO the law would prohibit us freight trains in Germany cannot go faster than 120 not if they are in PZBO, not if they are under LZB 120 is the maximum for freight trains in Germany let's have some external camera shoot shots on our trucks too and the train that we are using today with those Schimmens 2 wagons and this is actually the track where we were supposed to end up even though our path from the Wuppertal yard to this track here was a bit a weird one because we had to go across so many switches and through the Gegengleis through the against the flow of traffic track and if you're actually looking out for it then you can see on, on the track for the opposite direction a lot of those isolated uh, distance signal boards and the isolated trapez tafeln the reduction to 130 does not really bug us there was another trapez tafel for the track to the right of us more S-Bahn trains sitting in the station this is the part where the tracks divide unfortunately we won't see the S-Bahn train going through this tunnel and emerging on the left of us because we have been too fast you can see on the left the tunnel that is for the S-Bahn route What you can also see is that this version of the Trax 2 is sometimes has a bit of performance issues. It doesn't really get a lot of traction effort on the track. There is one service where you're supposed to transport a train with loaded tank cars 
in the opposite direction and you are not really able to do that with this locomotive here in the journey mode at least and normally it should not be a problem with these trucks to to pull those trains if you want to have a look it is only 554 tons less than 300 meters this is not so much now we are on the avoiding line you can see there are only two left and now you can see the AFB in action and how the AFB in yeah with supernatural effectiveness is keeping our speed to 119 120 with a later version of the AFP on this locomotive here we already would have ran the speed limit because we are now going downhill you can see this going quite fast cap is swaying heavily but the AFP is keeping us to 120 no matter what it is a bit of a time that I played this service so far in preparation for this stream I on only played this part with the trapeze tafel to see if I'm actually in the correct service if I remember correctly there was quite a harsh reduction at the end of this part in speed limit I mean to 50 or whatever so we will see that we have to apply the brakes quite heavily then before that I think you can still enjoy a speed sign that displays a zero one of those speed signs that were affected by this bug where all the speed signs all of a sudden showed zeros here you can see zero this is one of them that remained so a couple of speed signs are still in the same uh, in the game that display the the zero even after the bug ha has been repaired and now let's see when we are coming to the final reduction in speed limit before we get to Hagen for passenger trains it is a speed limit of 150 here actually for freight trains I will repeat this as often as necessary we can never go faster than 120 on a freight train not unless we are ready to break the law what does not keep the AI drivers in the game from going faster than 120 with their freight trains but this does not mean we are allowed to do that again you can see those pumping motions on the brake effort meter what is now uh, 150 okay a reduction to 150 does not really bite us isn't that a nice view sometimes the lighting works out really well
150 again. Now the AFP is actually accelerating. I think there is also a little yard here. They can do some shunting services. But now we are getting a, re a yellow reduction to 60. That's what I meant. So we have to get our speed below the 70. Let's see if that works. Within our, what was it? 29 seconds. So we don't get a Zwangsbremsung. Yeah, it works. We are good. But you saw I had to apply really a serious amount of brake force to stop this train on the decline. to be at the 60 here. <laughs> below the 70 or to be exact below the 65 for the piece at B. Well, yeah, that was <laughs> that was a serious sway even with the limit of 60 here. Yeah? And now we are closing in on Hagen. Again with this little amount of fog, this lo looks really nice. Are there more reductions in speed limit incoming? I think we will have 40 in the end or something like this. But I just, I, I trust the, the signals now. I don't look on the speed profile, I will just drive according to the signals and trust that they will slow us down in time. Yay! But I'm I'm, I'm really I'm really happy. This this looks extremely nice. This approach to Hagen Station under TSW. Here you can see the main station building on the left. This is where the passenger services stop. And we are going around it. Ah, yeah. Now we're getting a distance signal warning us about a reduction to 40. So we'll just bring down the speed to 40 with the AFB. Again, the this this version of the AFB in this version of the locomotive is much too effective. And the later versions of the same locomotive have an AFB that is not that effective anymore. So you have to work around this or manually bring down your speed. And Hagen Freight Yard is really, really huge. I remember I once walked around here because Rheinruhe Osten is one of the routes where I actually tried to find the collectibles. And I spent hours walking around on this freight yard here. 
to find the collectibles. And in the end I think I am missing one of the collectibles on this route. And then I lost interest. Maybe sometime I will find it by chance. Okay, only 650 meters to go. And in case you did not know, the uh, Ruhrsieg Nord DLC, it connects exactly here, where we stop here, where this DLC ends at uh, Hagen Freight Yard. The other DLC begins, or actually overlaps, because the Hagen Freight Yard station is in both DLCs. So this would be definitely a candidate in case there ever will be route merges where you can drive from one DLC into the next. What would be nice here in this context, I'd appreciate it. But on the other hand, you can just switch the DLCs and run a different service. Getting the speed down to 10 with the AFB is not a problem at all. Stopping the train with the AFB is possible, but it is usually not done as far as I know. So we will just use the train brakes to stop the train from this very slow speed. Here you can see one of those shunting signals on a post. And 500 stop. That was this service already. And this is what I wanted to talk about in this stream today. When it is okay to run red signals under PZB and in which cases you have to press the Befeels taste. Actually, you can run across every active 2000 Hz magnets if you press the Befeels taste. It does not necessarily prevent you from spatting out in the game if you are not allowed to run this 200 Hz magnet but um, at least you don't get a Zwangsbremsung. In real life you would get obviously into trouble if you run a 2000 Hz magnet by pressing the Befeels test if you are not allowed to do that just for fun. Well, how long did it take us? One hour, eight minutes. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for moderating the stream once more, AJ. And uh, yeah, now we are almost done with our PZB series. I have one uh, more in my mind about restricting and releasing. We have been doing this all the time, but I wanted to have a, a closer look on how this interacts, restricted mode and releasing, and what is obviously not necessarily connected, but mm, I think it makes sense to look at it uh, in one approach. And then we are I think through with the piece that B stuff and then we can do something else again. Thanks for watching. Next stream will be on Thursday evening at um, at one at what? At eight, I think. Thursday at eight uh, Central European summertime. Thank you very much and have a nice day.